Event shooting with the Canon XC10. Hello, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media on Q, and I'm making this video to help answer some of the questions that I received from event shooters about how the XC10 performs when shooting indoors in available light. I'm gonna share five workflow observations that should help you get better results when using the XC10 and shooting in available light indoors. I want to thank everyone who has made comments or sent in questions about the Canon XC10. I really enjoy interacting with all of you in this YouTube community. I also want to take a moment to thank Alyssa and Bert for coordinating and arranging the location because as some of you know, I'm not an event shooter. Okay, let me tell you about the setup. I'm flying the Canon XC10 on the Ronin M. ISO is set to 1600. White balance is set to auto and I'm using phase detection autofocus. The picture profile is Canon C-Log, which is picture profile five. I found that you can push the ISO to 3200 in locked off shots that don't have a lot of motion. And it also doesn't take a lot of effort in post to polish off the shot. So in this video, I decided to focus on more complex shots. We're inside of a church and I asked them to set the lights to match a typical wedding service. I'm shooting in 4K, so my observations are gonna be based on 4K delivery. If you're delivering in 1080, then you have substantially much more wiggle room in post, so keep that in mind. Of course, these observations are only valid for this set of shots, but hopefully they'll give you an idea as to what it is that you can expect or what it is that you might do with the Canon XC10 in those types of situations. So that leads me to my first observation. When your point of interest or your talent transitions from in or out of the light, you will want to pick an ISO that allows you to protect the highlights because once the highlights are blown out, they're not coming back. From my experience, the only time you have a little bit of forgiveness, and I mean less than half a stop of forgiveness, is when you stick to the native ISO. In a perfect scenario, you would have someone else managing the camera settings using the Wi-Fi remote feature, so you don't have to worry about that. And of course, if you had the budget, you'd have someone else controlling the Ronin M altogether so that you didn't have to do all three jobs simultaneously. My second observation, when reviewing the clips on Thunderbolt displays, they're not 4K displays. It is very easy to mistake the out of focus or the bokeh area with potential noise. That was eye-opening for me because what I initially thought were problem areas turned out to be simply out of focus areas. I used this Sony 4K display as my reference monitor and frankly, it helps not only identify but also clarify what is and isn't a problem. So this brings me to the third observation. The screen size matters because the smaller the screen size, the more difficult it is for you to identify potential problems with your clips. Some of you may already be a part of Shane's inner circle, and if you're not, you'll want to definitely check out his blog and consider a membership. In my opinion, it's totally worth it. I take that back, it's more than totally worth it. You have to check it out. Shane often points out resolving power and how then it's displayed on a larger screen, and he's clearly talking about cinema. And while that might seem obvious, it really isn't obvious until you actually see it for yourself. In the past, I did a test on the Blackmagic production 4K camera where I didn't have a 4K monitor and I went ahead, I graded it, I produced it, I published it. And about a month after that, I bought my first 4K monitor. I played that same clip and all of a sudden I can see little dust particles floating in the air that I couldn't see on my Thunderbolt displays. So where I'm going with it is that because it looks good on a smartphone or a tablet or even your retina display on your laptop, it doesn't necessarily translate to looking good on a 40, 50, 60 or 70 inch TV set. So my advice would be, to set up a 4K reference display if you have to deliver in 4K. There really is no way around that. My fourth observation is long takes. I would suggest that on long takes, 
especially when your talent is transitioning into different types of lights with different exposure values, that you use those exposure values or the differences in light as your cut points. This will allow you to color correct each of the clips individually to better match the whole sequence and maintain consistent midtones, which of course is important for the skin color. And finally, my fifth observation, location scouting and walkthrough. This was the first time I'd been in the space. And when I heard from Alyssa and Bert telling me that we were going to this specific church, I thought, perfect. We've all seen churches before, either in person or in movies or TV, right? So it never occurred to me that there would be no natural light coming into that room. No windows, no skylights, only whatever leaked through the doors. I also didn't think about the possibility of two different color temperature light bulbs lighting up that space. And by the way, when they open up those doors, light just blasts into that room from the floor to ceiling windows in the lobby area. Yet again, changing the white balance color temperature of the room. Now all those points are important, and because I had a very short notice and a very small window of opportunity to make this happen, I was frankly unprepared. So when I arrived on location, I very quickly realized that I couldn't do what I normally do. I couldn't dial in the settings on my camera and then start to shoot. I had to figure out how to make that work given all of these variables that I was not prepared for. And that's why I went with a lot of the auto settings on the Canon XC10. Now, if that had been a paid project, <laughs> I would have had a very difficult time delivering my absolute best. So in my opinion, the more you know about a location or a shoot, the more you can prepare, the better your finished product will be. I really feel like location scouting in a walkthrough are critical to making any shoot with the Canon XC10 successful. So let's recap. The five workflow observations that can help you get better results when shooting with the Canon XC10 in available light. Number one, select an ISO that allows you to protect the highlights. Most importantly, any highlights on skin tones. Number two, don't over process or over soften your image because you're mistaking bokeh or the out of focus area with noise. Number three, if it looks great on your iPad with retina display or your laptop or desktop even, it does not necessarily translate to looking great on a television set or a projection screen. So make sure that you always check the delivery platform or whatever the device is that it's gonna be viewed on before you send it off to the client. Number four, when shooting long takes, keep a mental note in your head of how you're going to edit that project so that you get that nice big wide shot or that B-roll or the cutaway shot that you're going to need to make sure that you have a finished, polished, professional product. And number five, do your homework. Make sure you scout the location, even if the only thing you can do is a Skype call with someone who is at the location or FaceTime if you have an iPhone. Make sure that the more you know about the environment that you're gonna go into, the better prepared you'll be to deliver a professional product in the end. And there you have it, my five workflow observations when shooting with the Canon XC10 in available light. I hope that you found the information useful, and as a result, you end up with a better product on your next shoot. I'd like to produce a series um, that focuses on a real-world project and what does it take to get prepared for it, the interaction with clients, and focus on gear selection and gear choices. If that's something you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. And as always, if you have any other questions or you'd like me to cover something else, please feel free to reach out to me across any of the social media channels. I've built my company and my YouTube channel with one goal, and that is to help you compete in today's web economy. Until next time, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media IQ. Thank you for watching.